So what would you do if you couldn't go home, if war or other disasters drove you from everything you'd ever known? Those are the exact questions a new book called When You Can't Go Home is raising to shed light on the lives of refugees living in the Pacific Northwest. Author and artist Carissa Kesey joins me now, along with a woman whose family is featured in the book, Eme Ngabire. Welcome to both of you. Thank Thanks you. for doing this. I mean, I think this book is, um, its time has come. Tell me a little bit about it. Well, thank you so much for having us. You're We're welcome. really excited. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, so I wrote this book. Uh, it took about two years to write it. And in it, it features 10 refugees and their stories. And aside that are 30 watercolor paintings that I have done. And not only did we want to raise awareness and raise empathy for for refugees, we also wanted to raise funds. So for each book that's bought, we donate 50% back. And then it also talks about kind of an action plan in the back of how to get involved into your community. Which is awesome. We're looking at some of the artwork now. And I think since a lot of people never have a chance to meet somebody who has been a refugee, the idea that we can understand this story, meet them, see this artwork, it's. I, I think very emotional. And may tell me a bit about your family's history, your history. Yeah, so uh, my family uh, actually fled the genocide that happened in 94. Uh, my mom fled the genocide with, um, she was pregnant and had our oldest um, brother. Um, after the genocide, um, in they- In Rwanda, we're talking Yes, in about. Rwanda. And after the genocide, um, they eventually went in um, Congo, where I was born with my three other brothers. Um, we were born in a refugee camp, and uh, uh, life wasn't easy living in a refugee camp. But um, the stress of living as a refugee eventually tore my family apart. So my mom had to raise five kids on her own. Um, she did it by God's grace, and then um, she valued education so much that she wanted us to um, get the opportunity to actually come to America and go to school and pursue our dream. And um, we applied to this organization that helped refugees come here. And it took about like five years of waiting um, to come here. And then I still remember the day when my family got accepted to come here. It was just one of the best days that um, we were able to come together here and um, follow our dream, you know. Even when we first came here, life wasn't easy. I felt like I was being born again. I had to learn the language, the culture, and everything. But we had people um, like World Relief that helped um, new refugees come to the right. United States. Um, we had churches and like just a big community that supported us. And, and it's, it is still hard to call this place home, but with everybody that we had around us. Um, and now, all my brothers in school and um, yeah that's it's a blessing yes. uh, it's not just a blessing for you it's a blessing for us yes. because mm -hmm. your being here makes us richer and better mm -hmm. as a country yeah. and it's one of the things that that I'm hoping people will understand from this book and maybe you can talk mm -hmm. about this a little bit is that people like it may go through so much mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. to get here they bring an amazing amount of courage mm -hmm. and resilience and determination yeah. with them yeah I, what I like to say is that, like some people say, okay, what, what do refugees bring? And uh, to me, everything. My life has been changed just by doing this book. Um, mm -hmm. But they know what to fight for because they've been through it and they want to protect freedom and they want to fight for freedom. Yeah, because they know what it looks like mm -hmm. not to have the things that are the most important yes, to the fabric of this country. Exactly. And I think you were right on when it's, it's not so often you hear refugees, you hear numbers, you hear statistics, but not very often do we realize that uh, we're living in the same world in the same city. Mm -hmm. And uh, to put a face next to the story. It makes people get off of using refugees as a political pawn or as statistics and instead say this is an individual, this is a person with a story and we have the the privilege and responsibility to learn and together and um, be able to live life together. It's very very hard to hang on to negative myths when you meet the actual mm -hmm. people involved. Thank you both so much for being here. The book is absolutely beautiful. The artwork spectacular. Up next, Kaiser Permanente shows us how food can be medicine and how we can help our communities hungry. We'll be right back.